I, I don't have to tell you that times are bad. Times are tough. Um, most of you are young enough that you probably don't remember times being quite as tough as they are right now. So many of you, though, do remember the, the mid-80s uh, and, the, and the troubles that we went through at that point. But uh, it's like Matthew said, and I think Matthew's here today, and I appreciate that. appreciate all of you being here on a gorgeous day. There is help out there. You just have to ask for it. Uh, and that's what uh, North Carolina Farm Bureau has tried to do with these, this series of programs, is to show you what help is out there. And what I'm going to try to do is talk about uh, your farm finances and, uh, and, like the title says, your farm finances and why it matters. Um, the information you need to know about your farm finances and how to use that information. Hopefully, the information that I give you will help you to um, communicate better with your lender, uh, to understand uh, what the strengths and weaknesses of your farm operation are, uh, and help you uh, withstand uh, these tough times. So. I'm going to move around and I'm probably going to drive the, uh, the, the cameraman crazy because I can't stand still. But our goal today is going to be to identify the top reasons, top five reasons that farmers fail and how to avoid them. Now, why am I talking about this topic? Uh, what's, my, what's my background? And Peter alluded to it. Um, I grew up on a farm in Trenton. Uh, I've dealt with farmers, lived with farmers um, uh, all my life. I've been practicing law for about 28 years and uh, during that entire time I've represented farmers uh, in uh, crop insurance claims uh, with um, FSA disputes and filing uh, chapter 11 and chapter 12 farm bankruptcies. I have worked with countless farmers over the past 20, 28 years to reorganize their finances, work with their lenders, uh, and keep, try to keep them on the farm. So I've, I've been there, I've sat across the table, I sit across the table from farmers uh, each and every day uh, talking about what's bothering them, what's, what works and what doesn't work. So I hope that I've got something to offer uh, on this. So we talk about why do farms fail, well we all know, you know we got hurricanes, we got flooding, We've got low commodity prices. We've got high fertilizer prices. We've got uh, labor issues. We can, we can go on and on, especially this year, trade wars. Uh, we can go on and on about why farms fail. But those are all things that you can't do anything about. You can't control those things. So it's beyond me to sit here and tell you what to do about those things because you can't do anything about them. What we're going to focus on, what I'm going to focus on, is what are the things that you can do to put your farm, your farming operation in a, in a stronger position? What can you do to put yourself in a position to withstand the storm, to communicate more effectively with your lender? So another way to say this would be identify the top five things that farmers can do, that they can control uh, to make their farming operation better and stronger. And the, the, the good thing is, I say it's a good thing, is that I'm not going to be telling you anything today that's new. I'm not going to tell you anything that you don't already know. Uh, but what I'm hopefully going to do is, is talk with you about how important it is uh, and how important it is to, um, to utilize information, real life information, to make better decisions. Now, as a farmer, you make decisions every day. You make all kinds of decisions. You make decisions like which crops am I going to grow? What kind of livestock am I going to produce? Uh, how am I going to market my crops? When am I going to sell? When am I going to store? Uh, what are the correct risk management tools? What kind of crop insurance product do I need this year? Can I afford to buy that farm? Can I afford to buy that tractor? Should I purchase or should I lease? Where can I get some operating financing? And should I continue to farm? That's a decision that each and every farmer needs to think about each and every year. Now I'm not here to tell anybody I need to stop farming. But everybody needs to think about, am I doing the right thing? Am I, am I doing what is financially sound and what is the best for me and my family? Uh, 
So what we're going to talk about today is all about decision making and how you go about making that decision and what, what information you use to make those decisions. I, I'm not here to tell you what the answer to any of these questions are. It's not my business to tell you what the answer to these questions are. What I hope to accomplish is to encourage you to make informed decisions uh, and, and make these decisions based on fact uh, and actual data. So what is the number five? We're going to do like David Letterman. We're going to do a countdown. We're going to start at five. And, and let me say this. I don't have any studies uh, from the Department of Agriculture or anywhere else that tells me what these top five things are. This is based on my observations. These are my opinions. This is based on what I see and what I hear and what I deal with every day. So take it for what it's worth, but I think, I think as we talk about it, you'll, you'll see some recurring themes here and you'll see some things that you deal with in your own farming operation. Um, so number five, ineffective communication with your lender. You know, access to capital is one of the, the key issues right now. And, and it's a recurring theme that I hear uh, in dealing with my folks is that the lenders don't want to re lend any money. Uh, nobody wants to make me an operating loan. The lenders are too tight. Uh, and you're absolutely right. Uh, lending is super, super tight right now, but it's not because the lenders don't want to lend money. That's how they, that's how they make money, right? It's not because they don't want to lend money. It's because we've had year after year after year when, when we as farmers have had to burn through our equity and so our balance sheets don't look like they should. Our financials don't look like they need to. And so the lenders are having a hard time justifying making the loans that you need. So what do we do about that? We make sure that we provide accurate and good information to the lender. We don't let them make assumptions about our farming operation. We provide them with the information that they need to justify making that loan. And we, we build credibility with our lender. You know, we say ineffective communication with the lender. I could change that and say no communication with the lender. That's a big problem, a big reason why uh, a lot of farmers fail. They go to see their lender every spring when it's time to get their operating loan. And then the lender doesn't hear anything else from them for the rest of the year. I look at it and I say, the lender is your partner in this thing. They want you to make money. They want you to pay them back. So they've got a vital interest in your farming operation being successful during any given year. So communicate with them regularly. If you see things are going to be short, talk to them about it. Um, if you see that you're not going to be able to make a payment by a due date, talk to them about it. Don't wait until 30, 60 days after the payment was due and they come and talk to you. You go and talk to them. What are you doing there? You're building credibility. You're building credibility with that lender. You do that two ways. Number one is frequent communication, and number two, providing uh, accurate information. You want to, to show your lender that you are fully familiar and fully aware of your farm financial situation, your farm financial strength. You want to show the lender that you do have the ability to repay this loan you're asking for, and you want to show the lender that you have the ability to withstand years like we're experiencing right now uh, and the last couple of years. So what kind of information does the lender want to know? Well, how much equity do you have? What is, what's your property worth? How much debt do you owe? Are you aware of your financial position? Do you know uh, how strong your farming operation is financially? Are you going to be able to pay me back? Uh, if there's a bad year, how are you going to make it? And can you sustain it? Can you, can you make it beyond this year? Do you have the ability to continue farming? Um, I sit down with farmers and, and work out repayment plans and workouts every day, and I, I look at it and say, all right, well, here's what the number's going to have to be. Here's what the payment's going to have to be. And I say to that farmer, how are you going to make that payment? And they look at me and they say, well, I'll just have to make it somehow. 
And, and by the way, that's not limited to farmers. That's everybody. Well, I'll just have to make it somehow. But that's not an acceptable answer when you go and sit down and talk with your lender. you got to show them, how are you going to pay this loan back? How are you going to make this payment? And why am I pointing that out? Because you need to think about those things before you go in and meet with your lender. Think about it. Think about what questions is, is, is he or she going to ask and how can I answer? How can I show this is how I'm going to repay this debt? Number four, lack of data or failure to use it. Again, what I said earlier is this is all about the decision making process and, and how do you make decisions? Um, do you make decisions based on data, uh, based on uh, actual information about your farm's productivity and your farm's finances, uh, or do you make decisions based on gut or feeling? Uh, it's all about making informed decisions. Again, I can't tell you what the answer to a question is, or, or, or help you or tell you what you need to do, what kind of crop to grow, things like that, but you need to make an informed decision. Things like what crops to grow, things like uh, this farm over here, uh, I've been renting it for the last five years. Am I going to rent it again this year? Are you making the decision to rent that farm based on that farm's yield, that farm's productivity, compared to the rent that's being paid for that farm? Or are you renting that farm simply because you've rented it for the past five years or the past ten years? Or worse yet, are you renting that farm because if you don't rent it, so-and-so down the road is going to rent it. Okay. Not going to ask a show of hands, but every one of you knows what I'm talking about. Folks, that's not a good reason to rent a farm. Not a good reason to rent a farm. If, if somebody's going to lose money on that farm, if it, if it doesn't yield well, uh, if it's poor land, if the rent is too high, let somebody else lose money on that farm. Not you. Again, Make informed decisions. So what kind of data are we talking about? Well, the first thing is a balance sheet. This is the, the basic financial document, the basic financial tool that every farmer needs to, to have at their fingertips. Um, and a balance sheet is simply a comparison of what do you own and what do you owe. And hopefully what you own is more than what you owe, and that's your equity. The key is accuracy and completeness. Every one of you complete a balance sheet every year. When you go to meet with your lender to get your operating line, you complete a balance sheet. So every one of you complete one of these. My question to you is, how much time do you spend on it? How much time do you spend putting that, that uh, balance sheet together? If you're spending 10 or 15 minutes putting your balance sheet together, then you're not giving that lender what the lender needs because there's no way you can be accurate and complete if you do that. Slow down. Take some time. Think about every piece of property that you own. Think about all of your equipment. Think about what that equipment is worth um, because again lack of equity is a major issue here. That's why the lenders are having trouble loaning money right now. So you've got to go in there and show them good numbers. Your lenders do this every day. They know what equipment's worth. So if you go in there and say, well, I've got this tractor and it's worth $10,000, but you say it's worth $1,000, or you say it's worth $20,000, uh, the lender's going to pick up on that. Okay, So you need to be accurate and complete. Give, give the lender what they need. Credibility with your lender is key. Okay, And if you go in there with a balance sheet, that is incomplete or the numbers are, 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 are not accurate or the numbers are um, outrageous, the lender is going to realize that and it's going to send one of two messages to your lender. It's either going to send the message that you're trying to play fast and loose with him or it's going to send the message that you really don't have any idea what you've got. And folks, neither one of those two messages is a good message to send to your lender. The best message to send is, I know what I've got, I'm on top of my finances, and uh, I'm going to bring you the information. 
What's the next type of information you need to provide to your lender? Projections. You need to be able to show what you're going to bring in, what kind of money you're going to bring in, how you're going to bring it in, what crops are you going to grow, what's your yield going to be, what's your projected price going to be. Here's how much I'm going to bring in and where it's going to come from, and here's what my expenses are going to be. And these expenses are based on the fact that I'm going to grow this number of acres of soybeans, this number of acres of corn, and so forth. Accurate, detailed information about your particular farming operation. And the most important thing here is being realistic. Being realistic. It does not do anybody any good to promise to do something that you can't do. Okay? If, 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 if you're projecting that, all right, I'm going to grow a um, 1,000 acres of soybeans and I'm going to yield 40 bushels to the acre. And you only have historically averaged 25 bushels to the acre or 30 bushels to the acre, then your projections aren't realistic. And you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. So be realistic. Don't think about your banner year. Well, there was that one year that I did 47 bushels to the acre. Don't, don't look at that banner year. Don't look at your very best field. Look at your fields as an average. Don't look at the county average. Look at your fields. Look at what their yields are. Look at what you realistically expect soybean prices and corn prices and so forth to be over the next year, not what they were a few years ago and not what we hope that they will be. And if you need help, um, get some help. You know, folks at Cooperative Extension can help with projections. Your lender can help with projections. A CPA who's experienced with, in farm and ag matters, a lawyer who's experienced in ag matters can, can help out with that. There are forms available, and this is just one that I found on the, um, or that I utilize from the NC State uh, School of Agriculture, or the Cooperative Extension website, actually. Uh, and it's a projection sheet for uh, 2018 soybeans. And you plug in the numbers there. You plug in what your acreage is, what your expected yield is, uh, and what your expected prices are. And this will help you re recognize what needs to go into these projections and how to do that calculation. And in the packets in front of you, all these slides are in the packets in front of you. And there's the uh, website, excuse me, for uh, that particular spreadsheet. You need to know, are you profitable? It is not enough to simply say, uh, well, I've got money in the bank. Or, well, this year I paid back my operating loan. And I have clients every year. I say, well, did you make any money last year? I said, yeah, I was able to pay back my operating loan. Okay, did you, did, you, did you make any money? Did you do any, any better than that? Um, and, and often they can't tell me. You need to know. You need to know how profitable and how productive you are being, which means that you've got to know what your expenses are. You've got to know what all of your expenses are. Everything that goes into producing that bushel of soybeans or that bushel of, of, of corn. You need to put in all your expenses, and that includes um, equipment payments, your capital cost, your fixed capital cost. Um, why is it important to know how profitable or how productive you are uh, per unit, per acre, per farm? Uh, because, again, it goes back to decision making. And you've got to decide, all right, am I going to rent that farm over there, or am I going to buy that farm? Um, and just to give you an example, if you've got a 100 acre farm over here and you've got a 100 acre farm over here, and both farms charge $100 an acre for rent, Up on the surface they appear to be identical farms. But this farm over here yields 45 bushels to the acre of soybeans. This farm over here yields 25 bushels to the acre. All right, which one's the better investment? One makes sense to rent, one doesn't, right? But if you don't know what your profitability is by, by the acre, then you, don't, you can't do that analysis. So it's important that you be able to say, okay, here's what my cost is per acre. And then you look over here at this farm and you're only yielding 25 bushels an acre or 20 bushels or whatever it is. And you look at it and say, yielding that many bushels to the acre, I'm not 
making any money. I'm not making any money on that farm. And so you make the decision, no, I'm not going to rent that farm. I'm going to put my money elsewhere where it can make money. All about making uh, intelligent, informed decisions. Number three, failure to plan for the bad year. Farmers are eternal optimists. Next year is going to be better. One more year. If I can just get one more year, I'll be able to repay this or repay that. And that's, that's wonderful. We, we saw tremendous optimism in the, in the uh, uh, video earlier. Farmers have to be optimists because there is so much that they can't control. Uh, but you have to plan for it. You have to plan for the what ifs. What if we have another hurricane? What if there's a regulatory change? What if uh, there's a continued trade war? What if soybean prices don't come back? You, know, you have to think about that, and when you go in to talk with your lender, you need to be able to discuss those things. What if? Show the lender that you have thought about them. Show the lender that you have a plan. If these things happen, here's how I'm protected. I've got this crop insurance product in place. Or, or whatever the answer is. But be able to respond to the lender. Show the lender that you've thought about it, that you've thought about the what ifs. And that's called doing a risk analysis. What if interest rates increase, or I have a total crop loss, or I get sick? Look for the weaknesses in your farming operation. Why might you get turned down? And one thing I like to point out at this, at, at this juncture is something that I've been seeing more in my, with my farm clients the last year or so than I, than I used to see, and that is farmers being confused about what type or what coverage level of insurance that they have. Um, used to, I never had a farmer come in that was confused about how much coverage they had or, or what kind of product they had, what was covered, what wasn't covered. I'm seeing that more and more and more, and I, I guess it's because there are more crop insurance products out there. There are, more, there are more choices now than there used to be. Make sure when you sign up for crop insurance, and I think the deadline is February 28th, I think, um, make sure you talk to your agent and understand what type of, of coverage you have, what's covered, what's not, what your level of coverage is. Make sure all your questions are answered. And I just point that out because I'm just I'm I'm hearing those questions more and more. So, in doing this what ifs and preparing for the worst, preparing for the bad year, you look at your liquidity, and liquidity is uh, how capable are you of paying to pay your bills based on the the assets that you have, the property that you have. Are you able to make it through a bad year? Do you have enough equity? to survive that bad year and go into the next year. It's all about the ability to pay your bills. Liquidity is, is measured in a couple, well, a lot of different ways, but the two main ways is debt to asset ratio and current ratio. Debt to asset ratio comes straight from your balance sheet. That balance sheet we were looking at earlier, as I said, that's the foundation, that's the building block of your, of your financial knowledge, your, the, the awareness of your financial situation. From that, you can look at what is the value of your assets, what's the value of your debt, and that gives you your debt to asset ratio. And um, we can see that as, mm -mm. I don't know what happened to it. Um, oh, here we go. We can see that um, we're a whole lot better off now than we were back in the mid 80s. Uh, but you can see the line is starting to trend up a little bit. That's not a good thing. That means that the, value, the amount of the debt compared to the, the value of our assets is increasing. So um, we see a, a trend there that's a little bit disturbing. Um, debt to asset ratio example, and, and this is just numbers I pulled up out of thin air. Um, you have your total liabilities divided by your total assets and that gives you a percentage ratio. In this case, it's 73%. Now, 73% is not a good ratio to have. That's not, that's not a goal. That just happened to be where the math, like I say, I pulled these numbers out of thin air, and that just happens to be where the math is. You, you really want that number to be much lower than that. 
But again, I'm not here to tell you what that number should be. I'm here to tell you you should be aware of what that number is so that you can speak intelligently with your lender about it. Lenders know that farming is cyclical. Lenders know that there are going to be bad years in farming. That doesn't surprise anybody. That's the nature of farming. The question for the lender is, can I weather it? Can I make it through if we have a bad year? Current ratio is very similar to the debt to asset ratio, but it looks more at the short term. What, is your, what are your current assets, your assets that you can liquidate fairly easily compared to those liabilities that are due in the short term? Okay. How, how easily can I make my payments that are coming due without uh, either having to borrow money, sell assets, or get some kind of cash infusion from some source. And again, this is just an example. You have your current assets divided by the current liabilities, and in this case, it turns out to be a current ratio of 1.38, and you have $7,600 that you can uh, put back into your farm and operation. Again, I, the number's not important. Don't pay any attention to the number. Um, that's not a goal or a guide or anything for you. It's just be aware of what that number is. It's a cash flow statement. Very important. Something your, your lender wants to see and something that you need to be aware of. And what is a cash flow statement? It simply takes those projections we talked about earlier. The projection of income, the projection of liability, or excuse me, the projection of expenses and divides it up by a month. What's your projected income in June? What are your expenses in June? Because we all know that in farming, you spend, spend a lot of money certain times a year, and you make money in certain times a year. And it's not always the same. You need to be aware of that so that you can look at it, look at a chart like this, and there's, there's one in your, not just uh, as part of the slides, but there's also another one that's part of your packet in front of you. When you're talking to your lender, you need to know, well, I've got payments coming due in May, but I don't have any money coming in in May. So I need some help, Mr. Lender or Mrs. Lender. I need some help. I need to make sure that I'm able to make that payment, even though my income's not going to be until December. But, but if you don't have it in front of you, if you, don't, if you haven't thought about it, and all you're doing is saying, well, I'm going to need $500,000 to operate, and I project I'm going to get $700,000. Well, when? That, knowing that's going to be the end of the year figure doesn't get, do you any good if you've got payments in due in May and June. So you've got to be aware of that. And you know, sometimes, sometimes when you're doing this, these projections, you're um, looking at things, sometimes it's bad news. Sometimes it's not good. Sometimes those ratios are not that good. But ignoring it is not going to make it go away. You need to know about it. You need to know about it before somebody else tells you. Number two, not treating the farm as a business. Now, when we talk about reasons why farms fail, this is a big one. Um, farming is a way of life. We know that. Yeah, I, I've lived it. Y'all still live it. Uh, I still have family in Jones County. My brother still farms. Uh, my uncle, everybody. The key is to recognize that while it is a way of life, it is still a business. It is how you put food on the table. It's how you pay the bills. And so with all the, the emotion that goes with farming, you still have to be aware you've got to make this thing work economically. So the problems, treating it as a way of life rather than a business, you've got to treat it as business first. Basing decisions not on facts, but on other things like sentimentality. Well, I don't enjoy farming, I'm not making any money farming, but I'm continuing to farm because my daddy did, my granddaddy did, my great granddaddy did. I understand that, I understand that sentiment but it's not good business sense. It's not a good way to make financial decisions. Inertia, well, I'm growing this crop because I always have. Okay, 
Let's, let's, let's delve into that a little bit more. Are you, are, you, are you making any money? Pride. Well, I'm not going. I'm not going to quit farming. I'm not going to sell this piece of equipment. I'm not going to. I'm not going to stop renting that farm over there because people will be talking about me then. Uh, family pressure. Had this the other day. A client sitting in my office and says, "says uh, you know, this farm here is this terrible land. It's not productive. I don't, I don't need it. It's costing me money. But Mama won't let me sell it." I said, well, but you're not making any money. It's not contributing anything to your farming operation. But Mama don't want me to sell it. Again, I understand that, but it's not good business. It's not a good way to make business decisions about what you're going to do with your farm and how you're going to make your farm survive. We're talking about survival during difficult times. And that means making difficult decisions. Fear and paralysis. I don't know what to do. I hear this all the time. Again, I get it. I understand because I talk to people every day. I don't know what to do. And so they don't do anything or they continue to do the same thing over and over again. Sometimes we subsidize our, our hobby with other jobs. You know, we, we work other jobs so that we can continue to farm. And that's okay. That is, that is fine as long as you understand it and as long as that's what you intend to do. As long as you understand that you know, I've got this other job over here and that's how I'm putting food on the table and that's how I'm maintaining my hobby just like golf or fishing or anything else. That's okay. But if you're looking at your farming operation and saying this has to be my, this is how I'm going to put food on the table but yet you're having to work another job in order to continue farming that's not making good business sense. That's not making the decision to continue farming based on facts and based on uh, realism. Um, farmers who have difficulty uh, uh, treating their farm as a business tend not to pay much attention to things like payroll taxes, workers comp, any kind of taxes. Um, filing tax returns. Uh, they, they let things like that, well, I'm, I'm a farmer. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mess with that stuff. Well, if you're going to be successful, if you're going to stay in business, you do have to mess with that stuff. Um, they don't have a CPA. They don't have an attorney. You're in a, and you're in a big business. If you're farming this today, if you're still farming today, you're in big business. You're dealing with lots of money. You're dealing with uh, high levels of expense, high levels of, of debt, high levels of income. You need a team. Your lender, your CPA, your lawyer, you need to, be, to have a team. Making decisions based on facts. Jack Welsh at General Electric used to say that if there was a division of his company that was not making money, he had a, he had a very simple rule. Fix it, close it, or sell it. Notice that, that those three rules do not include continuing to do something that's not profitable, continuing to do something that's costing me money, that's not working. Fix it, close it, or sell it if it's not working. If you don't do anything else when you leave here today, if you don't take anything else that I say to heart, I encourage you to do this. Keep your farm checking account separate from your personal checking account. If I can give you one piece of advice to help you weather the hard times and to make your farm more financially sound, it would be that. Your farming operation needs to have its own checking account and every dollar that comes into that farming operation needs to go into that checking account before it goes anywhere else. If you need money to live on, you take money out of the farm checking account and you put it into your personal account. You don't pay your house payment from the farm account. You don't take money and write a check to cash. Every check from the, checking, from the farm checking account needs to be for a purpose. And if it's to go to you for your family living expenses, that's fine. But don't make it to cash and just because then you can't keep up with it. Who knows? Who knows what it was used for? 
Make it to yourself and put it into your personal account. It makes tax time easier at the end of the year and it makes these other charts and, and data that we were talking about earlier much easier to keep up with. Um, knowing exactly what money you have coming in and what money you have going out. That is the most important thing, I believe, uh, in my experience uh, that would make, you, make your farming operation stronger. Number one, kind of alluded to this earlier, talking about per fear and paralysis, is failure to act. As I said before, farmers are eternal optimists. Next year is going to be better. Just give me one more year. And so they, they don't change. They don't do anything different. Um, do something. If, you see, if, if your farm is not performing like you want it to do, if you're, if you're afraid of what the coming year might bring, or if you just don't know, if you don't feel like you are fully informed or fully aware of your farm's financial health, go see somebody. Go see a CPA. Go see your lender and talk to them. Go see a lawyer who's experienced in ag matters. North Carolina Farm Bureau has made it possible for each and every one of you to have a, a two-hour consultation with me for free. Doesn't mean we're going to file bankruptcy. It means you're coming in to talk to me about your farm and operation, and we're going to talk about what you got going on, how healthy is your operation, and are there some things that you can do uh, to put your operation on a more sound footing. Take advantage of it. The three things to do now, separate your bank accounts, prepare a balance sheet, and go ahead and prepare your, your projections for the coming year using accurate and realistic numbers. I would add to these three things, two more things. Go ahead and talk to your lender. It's now February, so hopefully you've already initiated discussions with your, with your lender about 2019. And consider, should I go talk to a lawyer? Just, is it time for a checkup, in other words? So when you go talk to your lender, when do you talk to your lender? Um, now, uh, because it is February, but also when you realize that you may be short when we start getting towards the end of the year. Go ahead and talk to them. When you realize there's a payment due and you're not going to be able to make it, go talk to them then. Don't wait until after... Um, the, 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 the payments already passed due and they come and see you. Your lenders have much many more options when you talk to them early. Particularly Farm Service Agency, uh, the Farm Credit System, they have programs in place for how they deal with uh, debts that are in default. Um, Farm Service Agency has uh, their um, uh, primary uh, loan servicing, uh, the distressed uh, loan restructuring with the Farm Credit System. And all of those are time-driven. Requesting that type of assistance um, requires that certain actions be taken within a certain period of time. So it's all time-driven. Don't wait until a lawsuit's filed uh, before actually uh, trying to do something. And when to talk to your lawyer. Anytime. As I said before, anytime. Come, come in for a checkup. Help to identify problems. Help to identify options. Uh, help to identify ways to work out your financial situation. Um, I meet with many more farmers that I don't file bankruptcy for than those that I do. What I mean by that, I, it means I work with farmers very often and very frequently to work out their financial situation with their lenders uh, and help get them back on the straight and narrow rather than filing bankruptcy. But bankruptcy is an option, and because it is an option, particularly during these difficult, hard times, uh, I'm going to talk about it. Um, because I think every, it's important that everybody understand what bankruptcy is and what it's not. Bankruptcy does not mean I'm shutting my farm down. It does not mean we're having a big sale and I'm out of farming. Sometimes that's what it means. Sometimes there's no other answer. But bankruptcy is designed to give you a chance. It's designed to provide you with a mechanism to restructure your debts in such a way that you can pay them. There's two types of, of bankruptcy. There's liquidation, that's the selling, that's the getting out of the business. 
And then we talk about chapter 11 and chapter 12, and those are reorganization. And that's what I'm talking about when I say uh, restructuring the debt, changing the payment due dates, things like that. Chapter 12 is actually written specifically for farmers. Uh, came about in 1986. Congress uh, created Chapter 12, a type of bankruptcy just for farmers. Farmers are the only industry in the United States that has its own type of bankruptcy written just for them. Why? Because farming is different. Farming is different from other industries. You're not producing widgets. You're producing something that is at the mercy of, of the weather, uh, the mercy of foreign governments, uh, things that you don't have any control over, and your, your income is seasonal. So it's very different from other uh, industries. But it's designed to give family farmers a fighting chance to reorganize their debts and keep their land. Does that sound like it was designed to put farmers out of business and line up their equipment and have a sale? No. It's designed to keep farmers on the farm, keep them in their homes. What does reorganization mean? Your lenders have to stop. Filing bankruptcy stops your lenders, your creditors, from collecting, from repossessing, from foreclosing. It allows you to restructure your debt by reducing the interest rate, stretching out the repayment period over a longer period of time, sometimes reducing the amount of the debt, sometimes eliminating debt, changing the payment due date to a time when you do have revenue to pay. It uh, allows you to sell unnecessary assets. I have clients all the time that say, I would sell this farm over here, but I can't sell it for enough to pay the debt on it, so I can't sell it. Well, in bankruptcy we can. We can do that. Um, you can often avoid negative tax consequences. I can't sell this farm because I'll owe a ton in taxes. Well, in bankruptcy, we can avoid those tax situations many times. I can't get a, an operating loan this year because so-and-so bank still has a crop loan. We might be able to help get rid of that. Um, I can't use this money to plant this crop with because this bank has a lien on it. We can, we can get some relief from that. We can get rid of judgments. We can protect your homes. And we're often able to write off debt. So, why is it so important that farms be protected? Why is it so important to strengthen our farm community, our financial and, and mental health of our farmers? Because it makes a difference to our country. Agriculture, and it's often said, but it's true, agriculture is the foundation upon which this country is built. It's the foundation upon which our society is built, the foundation upon which our economic system is built. William Jennings Bryan in 1896, former Secretary of State and, and presidential candidate, said, destroy our cities and they will spring up again as if by magic, but destroy our farms and grass will grow in every city in the country. What's he saying there? Destroy our cities. You knock down our buildings, we'll build them back. Not a big deal. Destroy the farms and nothing else can stand. The cities will collapse. It was as true in 18, it is as true now as it was in 1896. In your packet, there's some, some tools, some uh, websites that you can go to to help with some of this information uh, that I've talked about. Um, I'm glad you're here. Uh, five minutes before this thing started, I wasn't sure anybody was going to be here, and then the crowd started coming in. Uh, I appreciate North Carolina Farm Bureau putting this together. Uh, and giving us an opportunity to share some information with you to, to give you some things to think about and hopefully some ways that you can go back and, and work on your farm finances and put information together that will uh, help you communicate better with your lender uh, and help you uh, make better and more informed decisions.